I'm Mark Golub, and in the news, over the past number of days, there have been some rather disheartening revelations about tactics that have been used by the IRS in targeting certain organizations which have a philosophy opposed to that of the current administration. And the story is very, very troubling to me personally. You know, back in the early 1970s, I had this extraordinary opportunity to serve as the editorial director and director of public affairs for one of the first telephone talk radio stations in the country, WMCA Radio in New York, which was then led by its president, R. Peter Strauss, president of Strauss Communications. And it was a fabulous job. I loved every minute. Got to work alongside some of the great radio voices of New York City, Barry Gray and Bob Grant, Barry Farber, John Sterling. But the best part of the job was to be writing editorials in the 1970s on every social and political subject imaginable. And remember, those were the Nixon years, the years of Watergate, Woodward and Bernstein, when serious journalism was a calling when investigative journalists were heroes among Jewish liberals, Democrats. And the Nixon White House, they were the bad guys. And we were repulsed by an American administration that would create an enemies list targeting journalists and liberals. And we despised an administration that would use the IRS to punish others who had differing political ideologies. And I remember how proud I was when R. Peter Strauss became the first broadcaster in the country to go on the air on October 22, 1973, with an editorial calling for the resignation of President Richard Nixon. The Monday after that Saturday night infamous Midnight Massacre, when the President fired Independent Special Prosecutor Archibald Cox, who defied the President by issuing a subpoena for the Nixon White House tapes, and then to be followed by the courageous resignations of Attorney General Elliot Richardson and Deputy Attorney General William Ruckelhaus. And none of us felt it had anything to do with political party. We all felt it was simply unacceptable for the White House to have an enemies list or to use the IRS to inflict personal punishment on those whom disagree, who disagreed with the administration. For us in the 1970s, it was a matter of principle, not politics. And so, how breathtakingly disappointing it is now to find that the IRS is formally apologizing for engaging in the same unacceptable behavior, but this time, instead of targeting liberals and Democrats, the IRS is targeting conservatives, Tea Party supporters, Republicans. If it was wrong in the 1970s, it's just as wrong today. And no one among us who reveled in the work of exposing the despicable practices of enemies lists and IRS witch hunts, none of us should be in any way tolerant of similar behavior today. And then, as American Jews, it turns out we have another reason for real concern. For it seems that among the groups being targeted are Jewish organizations which are known to be especially supportive of the State of Israel in a way that tends to be associated with the right-leaning sector of the Jewish community. And to explain how this is playing out today, I am pleased to have on our phones right now from Philadelphia, 
Lori Lowenthal Marcus, founder and president of a Jewish organization known as Z Street. And Lori, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, Mark. Thank you for having me on. Lori, you found an organization called Z Street. We all know of J Street. By the way, J Street is a duly recognized 501c3 charitable organization recognized this way by the IRS. And that your organization, Z Street, also applied for 501c3 status. But lo and behold, Lori, the IRS had some rather strong things to say in opposition of granting Z Street the same status that it, uh, that it gave to J Street. I wonder if you can tell us what happened when you did apply for 501c3 status. Sure, Mark. We applied in late December of 2009. We applied to the IRS for tax-exempt status. And uh, during the course of the next several months, we received some questions from the IRS uh, about our application, which we answered, and then we didn't hear from the service for quite a while. Our corporate counsel started making phone calls to the IRS agent in charge of our case, uh, in charge of our file, in the summer of um, 2010, asking whether they needed additional information or if um, there was a problem or some way that uh, we could help move the application along. Um, initially, the agent didn't respond, and then finally the agent did take the phone call and told our corporate counsel that the reason it was our application was taking such a long time was because any organization connected to Israel required special scrutiny by the IRS. And the agent also told our lawyer that some of those organizations had to be sent to a special unit in Washington to determine whether the organization's positions differ from those of the administration. Because your policies might differ from the current administration. Right, and, and both of those, Mark, are, are problems. Um, we shouldn't, no organization should be treated differently simply because it, it deals with Israel, but um, even worse, the idea that they <laughs> were looking at organizations to see if they, the organization held positions that are different from the administration is clearly viewpoint discrimination, which is a violation of the U.S. Constitution. Incidentally, I should let our viewers know, you have also done some work as a journalist for the Jewish press. Yes. And yes. there was a story about this in the Jewish press. In addition, uh, World Jewish Daily, published by George Haynes out of Chicago, had this story on Monday morning as well. So the story has really now attracted some national attention, and I am so glad we can also bring this to the attention of our viewers. When the IRS comes after an individual or an organization, it is really terrifying. Yes. It's sad that in the United States of America, people still literally quake at the idea of the IRS looking into them. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I have to commend my board members for agreeing that, um, yes, this was really important. We, we had to take action. And also, we happen to be lucky enough that I'm a lawyer and my husband is a lawyer, and we um, were able to do this. We didn't have to pay someone else. If some other organization experienced what we experienced, and we know that there are other organizations, they couldn't, how can they afford to bring this litigation? I mean, we're still in litigation two and a half years later. Yes. Would you, by the way, just clarify, why are you called Z Street? We are called Z Street because we're proud to be Zionists. Z is for Zionist. It was one of those words that has um, the people who don't like Israel have tried to turn into a, um, a, a negative word, a, uh, something that people should be ashamed of. So we wanted very much to take that word and turn it into something that we're proud of. Now, what does Z Street stand for and what do you represent that is so upsetting to the current American administration? Um, well, the primary focus is to provide 
accurate information and education about the Middle East and about the Jewish state of Israel. Um, unlike some of the other organizations, we're not as focused, we're, we don't focus on the so-called peace process because it seems to us what the goal of the peace process has become to create a Palestinian state instead of to create peace. And so what we really focus on is, is uh, looking to provide support for Israel, provide, most importantly, provide accurate information, uh, but also to assert the right of Israel to refuse to negotiate with, appease, or make concessions to terrorists. Is there any activity you engage in which would be counter to that represented by a 501c3, which is the designation given to charities by the IRS? None. We don't take any positions on political parties. Uh, we really, really and truly are about education. It's fascinating to me how many uh, people say, oh, well, you say Judea and Samaria. That's political. No. West Bank is saying it's the West Bank is a political statement. Judea and Samaria is a biblical name, and it's what um, that area has always been called until... Uh, Jordan occupied that area. So, um, you know, if you disagree with our positions, the issue isn't, you know, whether our positions are inappropriate. It's why anybody thinks they are. Yes. By the way, it is no more or less political than describing the territory as the West Bank. Right. Do, exactly. you, raise, do you raise money for political candidates? No. 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 We never, never have. Never, ever. We don't sponsor political candidate. We don't do anything to do with political candidates. Um, if we disagree with a position taken by a political candidate, we disagree with a position, not the person's party. Um, okay. Do you fund any organizations other than yourself? No. No. Never. Never. Um, but, Mark, let me, let me point something out. Um, which is that because the IRS chose to freeze our application uh, and we are stuck in limbo. Yes, you're in no man's land. We're in no man's land. And so we made the decision. We had to take down the request for donations on our site. In fact, you, can't, you don't even, people can't even write to us. They can't send us anything. They can't. I took down the link to um, PayPal. We don't raise any money. We don't do. We basically uh, were shut down because of uh, the IRS's inaction and delay of our application. But I have in front of me the papers that are put out regarding your case. I want to read one little section to our audience. It says here that Z Street was informed explicitly by an IRS agent on July 19, 2010, that approval of Z Street's application for tax-exempt status has been at least delayed and may be denied because of a special IRS policy in place regarding organizations in any way connected with Israel, and further, that the applications of many such Israel-related organizations have been assigned to, quote, a special unit in the D.C. office to determine whether the organization's activities contradict the administration's public policies, unquote. These statements by an IRS official that the IRS maintains special policies governing application for tax exempt status by organizations with the, which deal with Israel and which to require particularly intense scrutiny of such applications and an enhanced risk of denial if made by organizations which espouse or support positions inconsistent with the Obama administration's Israel policies. This constitutes an explicit admission of the crudest form of viewpoint discrimination and one which is totally un-American and flatly unconstitutional under the First Amendment. This, in essence, is what your counsel is arguing, correct? Yes, that's it. That's exactly what we're said. Yep. There's also some question here about whether Z Street is in some way promoting terrorism. Speak to that for a moment. The IRS 
took a few different and conflicting positions about why they were looking into uh, Z Street, why they were giving Z Street special scrutiny. Uh, one of which was that they said it was an action organization, one of which was um, that they were looking at any organization connected to Israel. And then um, in an affidavit by the manager of the exempt organizations division of the IRS, they said that terrorism happens in Israel. And since we are connected to Israel, it may be that we are funding terrorism. Israeli is terrorism? Yeah, presumably. I mean, most, most of the time, the word terrorism is applied to attacks against Israel, not by Israel. You think? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it was almost jaw-dropping in the, the audacity of someone to pretend, to claim Oh, well, we're just being careful about terrorism. We don't know if you, these, you know, little Jewish people in suburban Philadelphia are actually funding terrorism. It's ludicrous. It really is. It really is. It was, it was really almost offensive. Also, I don't understand. It was 2010 that this ultimately became a formal issue of contention between Z Street and the IRS. This is 2013. How does the IRS explain it's been virtually three years without a decision being made? Well, in part, it's because um, the process of litigation in the United States is a very, very slow moving process. But when I tell you that, we are so close to the not even having taken a baby step in this litigation. We don't even have an answer from the IRS. They filed a motion to dismiss, and then there were papers back and forth, and then nothing happened for two years. And then finally, the court in Pennsylvania, the federal district court in Pennsylvania, transferred our case to uh, Washington, D.C., the district court there. <clears throat> and it was um, more, many more months, it was uh, over a year before we finally had a hearing scheduled. The one substantive position that the initial court took was to one to transfer to D.C., but the other was to say that they agreed with the plaintiff, that is us, C Street, that we were raising a claim about the constitutionality of the process. So there are court papers that say a judge agrees we are raising a constitutional issue and yet still nothing has happened in over well over a year so the fact that all of this is coming out now uh, from the IRS that they are admitting that they were targeting certain groups it's so much bigger than what they're admitting and it goes back so much further and it's really much deeper than the initial claims Lori you understand that there are many Jews in the American Jewish community who really are very much in favor of a two-state solution, mm -hmm. who believe that whether we have a historical claim to Judea Samaria or not, that at the moment the best thing that could happen for the state of Israel and the entire Middle East would be that there would be a peace agreement between the Palestinians and the Israelis. And that that is the dominant feeling within the Jewish community here in America, and it still is the majority opinion in Israel, although most Israelis do not believe there is any interlocutor on the other side who is serious about living with Israel in a peaceful two-state solution. And I have said over and over here on Shalom TV, I am in favor of a two-state solution, not because of the demographic issue, but because I believe that the Jewish community since the 1930s has argued within itself that ultimately that is what is fair to do with a land that is shared by two people. And it's not about whether you personally agree with me or I personally agree with you. I take the position that there should be a two-state solution and that ultimately if it could ever work out, I don't see it happening now, but if it could, it would be a solution to solving an issue where two peoples view the land in similar fashion. 
But I am wondering whether other, quote, centrist or liberal American Jews who may disagree with you on the substance still support the fact that Z Street has the right to its position in the Jewish political spectrum and that it is wholly inappropriate now as it was during the Nixon era for the IRS to be, use, to be used as a tool to punish people who do not agree with the administration on a political issue. Have you had support from within the liberal Jewish community, even if they disagree with you on the substance of your stand? All right, can I answer that in two parts? Yes. All right, the first part is you're making an assumption that uh, I, I don't take, we don't take a position on whether there should be a Palestinian state. The only position we take is that Israel should not be forced to negotiate with terrorists, and I can't believe that you would disagree with me about that. Absolutely not. So I don't, I don't think it's, I don't want you to characterize Z Street as the entity that's opposed to a two-state solution. Very We fair. are in favor of a peaceful solution, and we don't think that Israel should be forced to negotiate with terrorists. Then how do you disagree with the Obama administration? Because our focus is on peace, not on the creation of a Palestinian state. That's the difference. Okay, but, we're but not I, at the I, don't, I don't believe there is anyone in the, in the administration, I certainly don't think President Obama has ever said there should be a terrorist state that makes peace with Israel. He has called for the Palestinians to renounce all terrorism. But I, well, I really want to hear the second part. Are okay. there liberals who defend your right to be a 501, a 501c3? I think someone who looks at what happened to us, there would, I can't believe that there will be many people who would say, oh, no, that's appropriate. That should have happened to, to any organization. I want to rephrase the question then. <laughs> have, you received, have you received support for okay. your winning so 501c3 status across the Jewish spectrum here in America? I don't think very many people in the mainstream were aware of what happened to Z Street. I am waiting to see what the reaction is now. I will tell you that at the time we filed the litigation, the only organization that went on the record in any way was the American Jewish Committee, which is a centrist organization, which said... Why are they complaining? Of course the IRS has to do that to Arabs, so they have to do it to Jews, too. What's the so that? We they haven't have to received what? any official support. My guess is that anybody who is reading about it who isn't located either on the far left or the far right, I guess, would agree that the IRS should not be doing this. It's, it's viewpoint discrimination of the crudest form. In any case, I'm very glad you took the time to discuss this with the Shalom TV viewing audience. And we have not only many, many, many American Jews watching, but many Americans in general are watching you right now. I hope they are as concerned about any misuse of the IRS to punish any group for a right. political position. And I am hoping that Z Street now, the litigation, whatever legal in, in entanglements you are in. Now move forward quickly that you get unentangled and that in the very near future, Z Street will have a 501c3 status. And then I hope maybe you'll come into the studio and sit around the table with people who agree and disagree with you and share your opinion in a roundtable format. But Laurie, I thank you so much for giving me some time. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. The thoughts of Lori Lowenthal Marcus, who is the founder and president of Z Street. And again, you've heard my own perspective. I am just disappointed that after all we went through to eliminate this kind of nonsense during the Nixon years, that, there, that this could, uh, A, that this could arise again, and that there are people, I'm sorry, there are people who are in the Jewish community who somehow find a reason to excuse it. This is behavior that cannot be excused.
and I'm very happy that the Jewish Press, that uh, George Hainis's World Jewish Daily, and now Shalom TV are bringing this to your attention. As always, I invite you to be in touch with me with any thoughts or comments you may have. Please email me, write me, post on our Facebook wall, tweet me. I look forward to hearing from you. Until the next time, I'm Mark Golub. Be well, my friends.